Good evening, folks. We are now, now in, in session. session. We have a special guest today, KP Panyasai. And before I let him introduce himself, I want to let everyone know, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our channel on YouTube, Now in Session, and also our social media page, uh, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, you name it. Please like, subscribe, add, share. Uh, we'd love to hear from our fans. Love to get your thoughts, opinions about what we do here as well, okay? So thank you so much for the folks that have been viewing and, and, and supporting our, our channel. What up? Because you got to say his last name right. It's Panya Sai. Panya Sai. You got to say it the right way, there bro. There you go. Panya Sai. Said, you got to say it with some loud. Yeah. 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 You got to say it with some loud. So KP, Panya Sai. Panya Sai. Panya Sai. That's correct. Panya That's correct. KP, yeah. can, you, can you share a little bit about yourself to, to the audience? Okay. Uh, first and foremost, I'm Sabai Di Musibin Pidong Talai. I'm actually, I was made in Laos. I can say that, right? <laughs> made yes. in Laos. I was made yes. in Laos. Yeah. Yes. I was made in Laos. Actually, I was born in, in Hope, Lao. And so I was uh, born in, I'll say my year, 73. Wow. Long time ago. I'm, I'm an OG. Yeah. I'm an OG back in the day. I was born in Laos. Family came here as a refugee. As we all know, like our family is a, from the war. Um, I came here when I was six years old from Laos. Wow. So I came through the process of going to Thailand, in Nong Kai, then I went to the Philippines, then transitioned out to Illinois, uh, Oswego, Royal Illinois, before I moved to Hawaii, and then I moved to Fresno. I'm here in the Central Valley, and so that's been uh, my background. Um, you know, like I said, I, I have long history in our community, in our family, and a lot of stories from the old country and the new country. Nice. You know, those, I, like I said, I, I've I've got a crazy stories, but I'm here, right? I'm yeah. blessed to be here. With last a lot of the folks in the generation here, so I'm happy to Explain be. Explain the journey real quick, like how you go from is it Laos to Hawaii, then to Illinois? Like actually, actually from Laos, you know, as a ref, you go to Thailand camp, then yeah. go to the Philippine camp. I went to Illinois because my uncle, well, my sponsor with the church family, and most okay. of, you know, most all the refugees were sponsored by churches, you know, that, yeah, all that. So we were landed in Midwest. I say pop. So you know, I'm I, you from the Midwest. You can say pop soda pop. So I say pop a lot. Wow. So wherever you grow, you pick up the acronym, you pick up you know the language, the uh, colloquial stuff. So we stayed in Illinois for maybe three, four years, maybe five years. Mm -hmm. Then we went to Hawaii because actually they don't say Hawaii. If you're from Hawaii, you say Hawaii. Yeah, Hawaii. you know Hawaii. I thought it was Hawaii. In, in fact, tonight Fresno State is playing Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Well, Fresno, yeah. Fresno. So either way, I'm a win-win situation. I'm right. I, I'm a graduate. <laughs> I'm a, I went to school there. I'm a graduate of Fresno State as well. But anyway, from Hawaii, I had families there. A lot of families in the farming because that's what a lot of us did in the old country, farming. You know, and then they moved to uh, to the Central Valley because I also have family in the Central Valley. Are there a lot of farm like uh, Lao people in uh, in uh, Hawaii? Hawaii? Absolutely. You know, really? back then there was uh, there were a lot of Hmong community that lived in Laos, but then it transitioned to Minnesota and the Central Valley. Mm -hmm. But there is a huge Lao uh, a community in, in in Hawaii, uh, and actually there is a big farm called Alun Farm. It's one of the biggest Lao farm in the state of Hawaii. Really, and a lot wow. of the families. Yeah, really? I, my family is a Sibong Sai out of Hawaii. In fact. Um, you know, they own restaurants, businesses, and a lot of them are farmers. So a lot of the farmings they do is they farm, but they all sell it locally, but also they shipped out to other states of the country as well, too. So is this in like the main island that the, that farm is located? Oahu. Oahu. Oh, so yeah. I, the Hawaii has Oahu, Big Island, Molokai, <clears throat> right. Lanai, all the other island, but most of the people stay in, in Oahu. And I grew up in the Wainai's area. If you're a B, uh, MMA world, you know yourself, Max Holloway. Max Holloway. Max Holloway is my hometown no from way. Wainai. So a lot oh, of guys. Wow. Wainai is like the west side of Hawaii. Wow. The west, we're like west side, right? We're like the scrappers. Thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's not where North Shore is at, right? Nope. North Shore is way on the other side. <laughs> way okay, on the other you. side. <laughs> so yeah. Because yeah. I, I just came from Hawaii recently and we just did a tour yeah. of the whole island. And I don't remember um, what part was that because we just kind of went in the circles. Yeah. And I just remember uh, we went to North Shore and then they showed us where Obama's building his house, and yeah. then right across the street is going to be the locals, okay. where the house is a little bit older, and then across the street is where those million-dollar homes are at. Mm -hmm. So it's always a trip to me, like like literally across the street. You got you know, um, not-so-nice houses versus multi-million-dollar houses. Absolutely. So man. I was like, dude, how do you guys live like that? So instead of a three-bedroom, it's like a four-bedroom? That's the oh. price difference? No, no, no. This one is like, how, like a trailer home stacked on... 
bricks that was like all high. Oh, yeah. And it's probably yeah, about 18 and bedrooms in a thousand square foot home. Uh-huh. And then the one across the street from it, it's like 50,000 square feet with two bedrooms. Million dollar. Hawaii is <laughs> expensive, man. Living yeah. in Hawaii is expensive. Very multi yeah. million dollar home. Most of the, the land is actually a leasehold. It's not yeah. pretty simple. So you, you don't own the land, but you own the house, the, the, the little house. But then yeah. wow. it's expensive. Like the cost of living there mm-hmm. is expensive. I mean, it's crazy. I bought my condo in Hawaii. It's like, arms, like 645 square footed, right? It's like, like almost $20,000. Wow. I, I look recently too It's like Jeez. half a mil For yeah. like a small condo man. Yeah, yeah for just a studio Yeah just a studio man. And this is next to the beach uh, It's no. like Not even next to Dude, the beach Dude it's a condo Like maybe in a raggedy yeah, You know maybe, like uh, Whatever it may be But you gotta Like whatever, in Hawaii yeah. you, gotta, you gotta have like Four or five jobs man yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, You remember You remember Living color you, like, You're lazy you got, I've got four or yeah. five jobs Yeah, yeah you're lazy <laughs> hey. Wait you sleep four hours a day Yeah, yeah it must be nice Yeah You know nice. I've never seen So much Asian people In Hawaii You know yeah. when I went there Culture I thought shock. it was Hawaiian Yeah so I'm like Oh man these are like Kind of our people You yeah. know like Asian Everywhere yeah. they go, man. I'm like, oh, wow. This oh, is yeah. really what, mixed. No. What tripped me out is when I was there and our Uber driver, he's white. Yeah. But he was speaking Japanese. Yeah. Like fluently. Oh, yeah. I'm like, dude, like, there's a lot of people in Hawaii that speaks Japanese. Yeah, because how do you know he spoke Japanese? Yeah. Because the person I shared the car with, um, oh. they were Japanese and them. they were speaking back and forth. I'm yeah. like, wow. Dude, you. Are you making that shit up or like are you really having conversations? <laughs> oh, they do, man. It's like so many things. A lot of Japanese tourists, you know, a lot of net Japanese natives, yeah. a lot of Korean, a lot of Chinese. But at the same time, like in Hawaii, they speak pidgin, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like the yeah, native tongue, along, like, yeah. hey, uh-huh. bro, the kind of. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What? Because you can get some dirty licking. Yeah, you know, yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want yeah. slap. Or they, when yeah. you eat certain things, man, bro, broke the mouth, man. <laughs> when you go back <laughs> over there, do, does your vernacular change? Oh, it change, bro. It change. Yeah. change. But people like, I switch. Yeah. I switch. It's, it's Code automatically, switch. man. It's so, automatically. So do you speak pidgin? Too? Oh, bro! I speak. Oh, I speak a pigeon. That guy. We just doing right now. <laughs> well, like, I mean, yeah. I don't know. So he could have just been saying anything. I would be like, but wow, he can hear cool. it in the accent, oh, though. Yeah, bro, it's like, hey, that guy, nah, cuz, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bro. And hey, they say bye. licking, right? Hey, they you, say you want a licking. You want right? you're dirty licking, cuz. Yeah. You're dirty yeah. licking. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. broke the mouth. They're like, oh, bro, shoots. Yeah. That's true. That's pretty cool. Straight out. Did you learn like acting, and how how did you get into? Acting, you know, actually, I got into acting because I was from Laos in Laos, right? Because you know, during during Bun, during festival, all New Year, mm-hmm. you what in temple they have all these performers that comes to from different like traveling troops like Ma Lam. They see show films, they show show the shadow puppets show, show stories. So they yeah. tell story of tell the Ramayana, yeah, right? Yeah. The Ramayana, yeah, like, right, and right. and then in the temple, they see the stories of the Ramayana, and it, I always very fascinated about it. And also my dad, Paul Pin Pin Mot Lam, the Kapsam Nua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kapsam yeah. Nua is very like storytelling. It's like the American mm-hmm. jazz or blues. The folklore. The folklore, <laughs> storytelling. Yeah, yeah. So I love sitting around listening like Mot Can, Mot Lam, and I was very interested in about it. And, and watching, in Laos, I was watching mostly like Indian, like movie from India. Yeah. Or Thailand, right? Oh, that Bollywood stuff. Yeah, right, Bollywood right, stuff, right. like the old school. Which one's your favorite? You know what? I, I'm, I'm open to everything. I'm very, like, you, you're an sort of artist, you absorb everything. Yeah. So I got into acting when I was in Hawaii. I want to say I want to take acting classes, right? But I grew up in a school where didn't have drama, didn't have the mm. stuff, right? And then I went to see a play in Kaimuki, one of the school. It was all of saying, I want to be out this day, one day. But didn't know what it was. I didn't know really until I got to, I moved to California. And when I went to Clovis High School, I saw drama. Not only be an actor, but also to help. I wanted to help my English. I was shy. You know, most Asian kid is shy. This right. year. Yeah, that's that's and, pretty and much normal. Yeah, mm-hmm. very. But I was like, I was struggling with English. I was all struggling memorizing. I said, you know what? Drama is going to help me get my personality out. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Uh, start memorizing little things and more. But then I got to the class, like, I got hooked. And then the first play I did at Clovis High School was, I did a musical called Annie Get Your Gun. But then the fourth. What? Yeah, it's a musical. I play a chief and I play an Indian character. <laughs> I was, I, was I, yeah. I got pretty cool, you know. Then, but I was playing football during the fall. I said, I'm not, I'm not gonna do anything during the fall. I was playing football for Clovis High School, and mm-hmm. then the springtime I did theater. But my senior year is when I really like. They did the play called The King and I. Okay. You know, The King and I. It's a, it's Hi. a far story about right. the King of Siam mm-hmm. and his wife, and right, was, right, I played right. the king. That's a lead mm-hmm. role. I didn't singing. I act. But it was great. You know, I did that. I got, I got my bug, right? The bug got hit me a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I said, like, yeah, this is good. And then, you know, I, I got a scholarship for Fresno State, a theater scholarship. Yeah. Wow. To attend. I said, like, you know what? 
I was going to do it, but at the same time, I did so well the ASVAT tap. I almost joined the Marine Corps, man. Oh I, man, uh, y'all I, gave I, it up. Messed it up. <laughs> no, you know because I, you know, I said, you know what, I really wanted to join the service. Yeah. I, yeah. Every recruiting, you know, being an Asian smart guy, yeah. when you take the ASVAB tap and you score yeah, the highest, highest yeah, yeah. Yeah. everybody recruiting you, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. But I said, you know what, hey, I almost joined the Marine Corps, but then. I want to be close to family. Was that like during the war? Like when you were, uh, when you graduated? 91. Go, 91. Yeah. That That's, was like golf war, Golf right? war. Golf there war. was that golf time. War. But I never read the war or not, but I always felt I wanted to join because yeah. what this country gave our family. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Something to give back, you know, to be part of something. But I always, but I wanted to be in the Marine Corps, not just to, but I want to be intelligent. Yeah. I wanted to specialize right. in where? Crip- Southeast Asia. Yeah. Right. yeah. Translating. Yeah. Working with our, our, yeah. our people yeah. in our, commu- right. our, our country, right. in the community. Right. But acting stuck, gave me stuck, and I, Columbus High School, Fresno State, and that kept me going. But at the same time, I wasn't getting a lot of things at Fresno State. Yeah. But, you know, but the first play I did at Fresno State got me was, remember the anthology called Passages? It no. was all the anthology about these, all the refugees that came from Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam. Mm-hmm. They were writing stories about their journey experiences. Uh, Howard Katsuyu was the person gathered together, and then... Um, and then Kim Chin wrote the play, and then Eddie Manuel was. We got all these Lao actors, um, Hmong actors, Cambodian. They weren't actors. I was the only the true actors. Right. I got cast at that, and we tour telling our stories to right. throughout California, and we went to Japan to tour the show, because there's a huge refugee community in Japan. In Japan, uh, from Laos? Laos, not just from Laos, from from, from, from Southeast from, Asia, from this yeah. Asia, oh, in Japan. Water. Actually, my in mom's Japan. cousin. Yeah, in she Japan. has a cousin in Japan, and yeah. so we wanted to sell yeah. the story because of our experience. So that's wow, right. my first big role at Fresno State. So how do your parents take it when you said, "I want to go be an actor instead of being a doctor"? I, mean, I was I was talking about him about you know most of parents <laughs> want to be what doctors, lawyer, engineer, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I chose the acting while well, I got a scholarship. You know, um, you know, has, my mom was hesitant mm-hmm. at first. My dad, you know, they went to see my play in high school. My dad supported me as you know, dad was as long you. St- Finish it, stuck with it. Right. Yeah. Whatever you go into, put your heart and soul into. Hundred percent. Of course, you know you want to be stability, right? Be a doctor, right. lawyer, medical, retirement fund, all that stuff. I chose acting. Yeah, your your parents are more understanding. <laughs> understanding, you know, right. because at the same time, I was in first year of college and then I lost my dad, oh. so it's stroke. But I kept going. You know, I said, you know, I'm gonna finish this. Right, right. I'm gonna continue on my acting. I study acting. Like, Come on, a Lao guy studying acting. How many yeah. guys in Fresno? Yeah, it's very unart- yeah. unorthodox in yeah. what you're uh, what you're doing, right? Because there's yeah. not a lot mm-hmm. of um, mentors that we were talking about that you could look up to. It was it wasn't there yeah. wasn't at all, and and I always get stuck in like the the background role or this oh, character yeah. role. Yeah, and I said, you know what? I was screw that. I wasn't gonna do that. But it didn't fit the you know the Laotian narrative back right. then, you know. Right. And, you wanted to be a doctor. You have to be a doctor. You know. Yeah, yeah. because you know, I get, I get it where everybody's going, right? I, yeah. I have nothing wrong with it. I chose right. the art, but even when I went to Fresno State, you know, I, I played the politics of it. I wasn't right. like, mm-hmm. in a row, right. but you know, but the point where, but, but one person said, "Hey, KP, you, I, we were doing an assembly at your, uh, I think it was your assembly high, like middle school, whatever, one of the school. Hey, you want to do something? We're doing an event or Southeast Asian night." Would you perform something for us? I said, sure. I didn't have nothing. I had no clue what I was talking about, man. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what the heck am I going to talk about? And yeah. I said, you know, and it was getting close to like the event. Like, hey, yeah, KB, yeah. I got to come with a title. I got to come with a title. What are you going to yeah. do? I said, I don't even know yet. I was like trying to figure out. And I went, boom. You know what? Remember the, the song, Secret Asian Gen- Man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, you know what? That'd be great, man. <laughs> then I switched. You know what? Let me talk about me as right, a right, guy right. growing up. Yeah. My story, my experience as a refugee. Then I said, they asked me, what the title, Kibi? I go, name it. Um, let me see, man, man. Say it. Secret Asian man. Wow. Secret yeah. Asian secret man. Asian. Yeah, secret Asian man. So yeah. I play the role. So I said, Secret Asian man. That's what yeah. I, I stuck with. It. And I first role, I said, Hey, my name is Juan, James Juan. I'm Secret Asian <laughs> man, double Juan. You know? I was going to say, Do you get dressed up like a James Bond suit <laughs> no, and everything? No, I just, like, I, I kind of did, but I like high water. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? The Michael Jackson Lauer, like a high yeah. water stereotype. But I, I started marketing myself. Yeah. In way, way be in college. Yeah. Then from that, I was getting booking, like conferences that deal with our community, Sacramento, right. uh, you know, uh, Stone Soup had it every year. Every they, year. I was a performance. I was a yeah. guest performance. From that, I got more booking, more booking, more booking. 
I said, you know, no one's going to give me that sucker. I'm going to have to create it. Yes. Right, right, right. So I started marketing myself way before. Right, right. How, and you said, you know, you talk about your acting. How long have you been in the industry? How long have you been doing it now? Ooh, God, it's over 30 years, man. Wow. 30, 30 oh, man. plus years. Wow, grinding. 30 plus years. Still grinding. So how did you get the name KP? What, what does KP stand for? Uh, so KP stands for Kempet Panyasai. Oh, it's my initial. See, your initial. It's my initial. Do you use that as your stage name also, I use it or is both. that just for... I use both. Kempet, KP, Panyasai. I see. Uh, okay. But when wow. they say, hey, KP, KP, and it goes, that's not your real name, my right, KP. Right. I say, yeah. Right. But you know what it does? I was telling you about, it creates a dialogue. dialogue. What does yep. KP stand for? It's mm -hmm. Kempet, Panyasai. Oh, are you Thai? No, 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 no. I'm not Thai. I'm Lao. I was mm -hmm. born in Laos. I mean Laos. And here's my story. They go, oh, they're interested now. Now I get to tell what? Share our Culture. story. Yep. Story. In your journey, I mean, a lot of people heard about Thai, right? In the in, in the acting industry, right? They heard about Thai. They heard about Cambodia. You know, they don't yeah. really hear a lot about Laos. You know, do you get a lot of people asking you your background? Oh, absolutely. And, That's a great way of me sharing. Right. Of what I said, I'm a Lao actor. I'm an actor, but also this is my background. I'm a Lao. I was born in Laos. Everybody think I was born here because you know why? You can listen to my English. Right. Right. I mm -hmm. had to work on that because wow. acting, diction, pronunciation. Yeah. But I can go straight F O B if I. That's part of it. Yeah. I was an actor, right? Let, let's hear a little bit of that. You know, a little oh, FOB. Oh, emotional damage. Come on, don't worry. You know, I, 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 do, I do it again, you know, but I also yeah. learned different accent. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but but because of that, there isn't a lot of actor. Everybody associated with why, you know, what, and we talk about why do you want to change your name to American name, to right, something right, else. Right. I said, no, why would I change my name? That's my, that's my heritage to who I am. I'm yeah. proud to be loud. Mm -hmm. I'm proud to who I am. Right. That's why I stuck to the name. There isn't a loud actor. It's really rare. Really, really rare. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. But yeah. I get to play yeah. other roles. But this, like I said, we'll talk about this. Yeah. That's the first time I actually play somebody that's from our culture and use our languages. Yeah. I know Charles asked this earlier, but. Could you name a few for the audience who you worked with before? Oh yeah, I mean, like I said, in the series I worked with Evan Peters. I worked with uh, John, you know, I worked with Jonathan Bank as well too. Oh, okay. I worked with, you know, Nishi Nash. I have worked with Jason Momoa. I I have I just worked with Michelle Yeoh, mm -hmm. and everybody knows Michelle Yeoh international. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I just I have another series, Netflix series coming next year, which I I act like this with her, fun and fun with her. Wow. I can't tell them all the detail, but it's going to come out. It's called it, it's already out. It's called The Brother Song. Okay. Uh, so I play a Taiwanese Chinese mobster gangster. I play a lot of mobster guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say like, um, what's that uh, series on HBO, The Warrior? You know what? That that is one one of the campaign that I want I I want to get into. Yeah. I already told my manager, I, agent. Yeah, I want to do that. That's one of the, the. Are they still doing that one? Or season three is coming up. Season three is coming up. Yes, man, I can't wait for that. Yeah, you know, I hope I, you get on to that one. I know some. <laughs> I have some associate people that I know that are in it. That's oh, why. Wow. You know, I watched the um, the the Jeffrey Dahmer series, and you know, the acting that I yeah. saw you in. It did kind of remind me of a mobster, gangster dad, you know, the way that, you know, you were sitting there smoking a cigarette, cigarette, cigarette. And sitting there. Was that what you were trying to go for? Or no, no, that... no. You know, believe it or not, I never met the man. I only saw one picture of him sitting yeah. at, the, at the funeral. So how my process is, you know, I say, you know what, I'm already from that generation. I am a refugee. I understand the story for being a son, but I also am a dad as well, too. I also look at, you know, of who he is. He's like Polung, nah? Yeah, He's yeah, an yeah. uncle, right? He's an uncle, yeah. He's like every uncle we know, every bro father we know, the Kulao, that don't have voices. Like, they're, they're pain. There's a pain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody in our, our, our family, that our dad, uncles, have pain. They express it they with silence. They express silent. it. Yeah. They're silent, but silent. Yeah. Very simple. Yeah. Take it. Don't cause trouble. We're not trying to make trouble for the other community. We're silent, but we, we, we have to stick, make everybody stay together right. and much as can, but for me to take on the role, I took on every uncle, every people I know from our community to show the other people, not from our community, like how we feel, how right. he felt. Right. And so my goal was to, to share that, the pain of everybody in our community that goes through, even though the subject is horrible. Yeah. Yeah. But to understand our, the family, what it goes through. And uh, for me, I hope that I serve it the best way they can. And so for, for the people that watched it. 
How long did it take you to come up with that demeanor of that uncle or that uh, persona? It's that not about how I come up. I lived all my life with this demeanor. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. I've seen those all those uncles. Every right, right, bun, right. su kwan, everything, everybody we go yeah. through. So you knew it already. I knew going that. into it. Yeah. So you were like, man, I just been waiting for this role. I've been I'm practicing all <laughs> my really, life. Yeah. This is it right here. <laughs> it's you know, I was telling him like I didn't know. You know, like how how did you find the role? Right? right, and you have an agent. As an actor, I go through this called Actors Access, like casting. Right, I'm going, I'm going, scrolling through, and going. Wait a minute, that's a Lao name. Yeah. 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 That's not a Thai name. That's a Lao oh, name right yeah. there. That's definitely a Lao name. Let me see what I can look at. Okay, oh, I'm too young to play the son. Like, oh, that's a, the dad. That is age demographic I fit in. Yeah. And believe it or not, the dad, actual dad, I'm actually that's about the same age when it happened to when him. When it happened to him. Oh wow. Oh, wow. wow. But the forties, so 49, 44, 49 years old. I said that is the role that I fit. But I still look young. Yeah. But I, I had to gain some weight, put right. some they all the all the makeup little with older. And I auditioned. I thought I was going to be on for one day. I didn't realize how big it became. Yeah. And they focused, the writer really focused on that Lao family. Yeah. We had a Lao consultant, you know. Um, um, we had, the, we actually, the wife is a Kun Lao. Mm-hmm. The son that transferred me is actually Kun Lao. And the one other son is Kun Lao too. But the other two kids are Kun Filipino. Wow. Oh, dang. So we had a lot, the first time we had that much Lao people playing a Lao person. Wow, you know, and and that's that's amazing. When you took when you took that role, you know, I'm I'm, I'm looking back at the trauma, right, associated mm-hmm. with you know. We think about all the stuff that happened in that time, and you bringing back memories. Did you feel like you taking this role would cause a a conflict in the Lao community, or how would they see that bringing back? Man, the 1991 when this happened. How did you feel about that? I knew there was going to be conflict. Yeah, yeah. Anything I do, it's always going to be a conflict. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Everything, everything that we do in a community, there's always conflict in the community. Okay, I'm not. I won't. We're going to be straightforward. We ain't going to put no bullshit. We're going to be straightforward. No, that's the truth. Our community, our community. We, I love our community. Our community criticized. Everything. Everything. <laughs> yeah. You know what I think? We're going to get the backlash no yeah. matter what situation. I yeah. knew going to that role that I have, I've been in this industry so long, and I've been in this industry for a long, long time to understand. Right. No matter what the backlash that our community, whatever they may put upon us or me, I say I'm still proud very loud to represent a community in the best light I can. Right. So I want to make sure that people, our community may say, oh, that's bad to talk about. That's taboo. That's too much open, right, too right. many mm-hmm. wounds. But we get it. Yeah. But the other community don't know nothing about our, right, our right, stuff. Right. You know, especially the, the, the consultant, like the, 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 the blessing scene, that is true. Yeah. That lady is not an actress. She's an auntie out of someone Orange County came the, in. The blessing wow. scene yeah. that blessing he did scene. at the yeah. altar? Yeah. With the altar? Yeah. Oh. That is straight forward what we do. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? And in the Lao wedding, all that stuff, wedding, that right, was... Right. Legit. Legit. Yeah, yeah. How many times you see that on television? No, never. Man. Never. So yeah. the true Lao people, like the, the, like the only Lao character you guys ever heard about is, hey, hey are you Chinese or Japanese? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah. what I grew yeah. up with. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Uh, King the Hill? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when I came from, what, uh, Connecticut, like, there was no such thing as other Asians besides Chinese and yeah. Japanese. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, like, I go... Um, no, I'm Laos. So they go, what, what kind of Chinese is that? Yeah, what kind go, of Chinese no. are you? Yeah. This is a different... We, we, they clump to, to yeah. each other, right? He was like, no, no, I'm Lao. Like, and they think, are you Thai? You know, no. And you have to specifically... That's that's where our dialogue comes happen. Yeah. But for me, the acting world kind of opens up. I get a lot of... People ask me a lot of questions about our culture, our heritage, and my family story. When I share my family story, I share our community stories. Right. Mm-hmm. Because I see a lot of talented amazing gifted folks in our community they don't get a chance don't get an opportunity right xyz right. i get it yeah. mom dad wants to be doctor law engineer go for it but we have a different generation now that are looking to entertainment business mm-hmm. that wants to get into how to get into it and so like i said i, w- I had no mentor man back then yeah. Every Asian guy in the film, everybody know who it is. Bruce Lee, man. Yep. Yeah. Bruce yeah. Lee was Bruce a guy Lee. that yeah. was, man, wow. And everybody. Jackie Chan. Jackie yeah. Chan. yeah. Bruce Lee so and Jackie Chan. Jet when Lee. you were younger, like, since there was no mentor for you, which actor or could be anybody that you looked up to that made you go, say, you know what? This is what I want to go do. And this is the person I want to be like. Who inspired you? Okay. Everybody look us up. I look at my, my parents. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. You can look anywhere else, but my mom and my dad and my aunt and my uncle, my family are my heroes. 
mm-hmm. because they gave up a lot mm. to be here. They did everything they can to be here. They sacrificed. Mm-hmm. They took on so many criticism role. They had to work three, four jobs to make sure we get fed. Yeah. I don't look into anybody else but my family, my dad, okay. my mom, and my and my uncle because they inspire me. Because I look at them and say, you know what? I'm gonna make a better for myself and next generation to come. Even in Hollywood, I meet all kinds of stars. I meet that stuff. They're not my sports. I don't. That's not my my heroes. That's not my stuff. Right. Yeah. I'm inspired by my family. I'm inspired by my fam, my my uncles, because they. I see them, and even though some of the some of them have language barrier, it doesn't matter, because I see value in them, and they see value in you. So why screw it? You know, they, they say right, right. Pumeva. Wherever you go, watch out, Nam Sukun. Your family, it's yeah. tied to last name. Last name. Yeah. Yeah. So don't dirty it up. Yeah. Your family name. It's yeah. important. It's a legacy. It is right? absolutely it's legacy. It's a legacy. And then, you know, your, your uh, last name uh, moves on. You absolutely. Know, what you leave in this, uh, in this world. Yeah. yeah. If you ask mm-hmm. me who's my hero, my, my, it's my, par- my, my family. Mm-hmm. They are still. Are. My brother and my sister are my, uh, are inspires me too. Yeah. Because hopefully our next generation, my kids, and my nephews and niece, they move forward. You know, we want to like, it's one thing my dad taught me. These are things I phrase, you always see me say it, my, I post. Smile, laugh, and serve others. Smile, laugh, that's my dad's phrase. He worked three, four jobs. You know what? When, the, when he wasn't working in the daytime, he would help cook off the family like, transition here. He would go make sure they're okay. You have blankets. Make sure they're trying to take them to appointment. Then mm-hmm. translate for them. And he goes to work. And he comes home. I saw that in my dad. I yeah. do the same thing too. I, for me, I love giving back to our community and to any community. Right. I see the value because I see, I didn't have that. I want to inspire them. And so, mm-hmm. yes, doing this role, being the industry, everybody say, you know, be, create a pathway, right? So people can follow. Mm-hmm. I heard someone say, you know what? I want to create a road. Right. That road, everyone's going. I want to create another path. Yeah. Yeah. So that way you can yeah. set that. And go f- in the industry, right? Especially in the entertainment industry. Yeah, you can imagine like you, you auditioning for these role. Mm-hmm. You got fifty other, you know, yeah. actors want to want this yeah. role, and, and you say, "Hey, you know what, KP? You just don't look right. You don't fit, right? You don't you don't fit the the person that we want on there." Mm-hmm. So, from that, you're saying like, "Hey, man, how about I create my own series? Absolutely. I direct my own things, right? To create my own pathway, like." That's really, really inspiring, man. You know, to do that. Can you can you share one of your director roles that you've done currently? Okay, past? you know, I done a couple of short film. I did a, a a film called Impossible. It was based on Impossible. a a woman who's being abused by her husband, and I did that. I got nine nominations, best director. I did shot, I edited myself, I did everything myself, and I said, you know what, I can do that because I, from my background, I gave people opportunity. Right. right. I worked with a lot of mm-hmm. even. Asian, South Asian kids that comes in on board, I teach them. Right, you know, right. Like, but that was one of the great accomplishments. But also, I wrote another, I work on a direct another film. I haven't shown yet. Actually, I'm in it as well. It's called Naiku. Naiku okay. means teacher, right? It's based on the re educational camp. He I've escaped. Seen that one. I saw the trailer. I, I, actually, it's based on a father going back trying to find his son because his son was got recruited. And so, like other young guys, their their mind mm-hmm. somewhere else. And he he risked his other family's already crossed. He moved back. He jumped back. Got caught in a camp. He got get caught for a reason to right. find his son. Wow! Oh, wow. And so wow. that's sacrificing the family. It's called Night Cool wow. Teacher. So if people want to watch these uh, shows or movie that you <coughs> created, where could they go find it at? So I'm putting up. I haven't really released a lot of this stuff because I wanted to share as a bunch of short film. I want to tell story of our community. That's why it's all about creating something. Right. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. when I came to Fresno, my ex-wife and I started a theater. We actually had a theater, 50 seat black spot in the tower theater, owned by a Lao guy. Never heard of that. Wow. And other people were doing shows there. Yeah. Was given opportunity for people to create. I was hoping more of a community do more. And I write mm-hmm. plays about Lao. So when I was at Fresno State, um, I did a play a bunch of McLean kids were Hmong kids, Asian kids were coming to the apartment. I knew they were going to get nothing. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to create this play. I wrote a play. Never wrote a play. I wrote it. I had backlashes from the department. I got pulled <laughs> by my mentor. I said, what are you doing? Because they got hurt. Like it was getting traction. People were hurting about it. I was promoting. I told you, I was. I was Did they not want the uh, Southeast Asian community to um, 
kind of like get into this industry? I mean, it's not about that. It's about certain politics. Like I said, right, if someone right, puts right. a wall and say no, what you the job? What we always say, go up to the higher person say, right. until they get yes. Right. Yeah. If that person says keep saying no, no, you know what? It's okay. I'm gonna create my own path. Right. And so I did that play. Mm-hmm. It's sold out every night. It was talking about the refugee, about the gang issue at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm keeping. I, I was writing stories that was related currently to our community, and that I was doing. I was doing that even before I did film. I was doing theater. I was, in a way, I was like, you know, I want to share a story because right, right. I have a responsibility. Yeah. What year was yeah. this? Yeah. It was like 1990. Was it 96, 97? 96, 97. Yeah, it's called. Pa- it was. It was. It was called uh, uh, Black Silk. You know, so mm. black silk, pump now. Nah. Right. Pum, yeah. So it's right. like I, we told a lot of story, but in terms of writing, I've done short films. I try to do more of our community base, and I've talked about it. A lot of young directors, they're creating more Lao character, mm. more situation, family, so we can talk about what currently is well too. Not just the old, like everyone's talking about all the all the escape. Yes, we heard all of that, but it right. just there, there's important. But we got Lao professionals that are successful. Right. Yep. Or Southeast Asians with people are successful being doctors, lawyers that are holding high position. Right. But they mm-hmm. still got struggles. Yeah. Yeah. There's drama in, in every family. Right. You know, all these uh, Lao people that are actually in these high positions that you're talking yeah. about, they're just like you, paving and pioneering the road for, you know, the generation, generation. that's coming yeah. Absolutely. after them, you know. And um, yeah, you know, they don't know where to go sometime, you know, yeah. and it, it's a struggle, you know. It's, a battle that they have to fight. You know? So the thing I always tell people, find mentors. Yes. Mm-hmm. Reach out to mentors, the industries that show you. Because we want, if you learn all the information, what you, you're just going to hold that? What, what, what are you going to do with that? I think purpose. that's in our culture, right? Like our yeah. culture itself, like, man, they want to like hold all the information to themselves, right, right, but right. then they don't want to, you know, like kind of bring everybody together with them. We, we all, know, we always know the generations, like you as a younger man, we all right. know the situation like some are come this, some are come that, everybody yeah. has stuff. I <laughs> yeah. get it, I get it. But my dad saw that struggle. I learned that by yeah. watching my dad. You know, the temple the, on, on, on the Jensen stuff, my dad was the, one of the original one that actually kept the finances to make sure it, we have something for our community. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. You know, we know that. But when it comes down to, we're trying to build something for the next generation. Yes. Right. The generation you guys and I, we have kids now that yeah. are, they're Americanized, but they want to hold on. Yeah. They, they want to find out. They want to find out. From, right? Yeah. Even the music is changing. Even mm-hmm. the stuff now, like mm-hmm. we want to find out. So for us, is we've got to maintain and keep that. As much as we are like this, we got to share. I'm in the entertainment business. I've been through thinking. I've been rejected. I've been called every freaking name in the world. I, I was. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't have to tell <laughs> wow. you. I don't have. Oh, you're you're, you're not Asian enough. Slanted You're not Asian enough. Right, you're right, blah, right. Like, you, you need to do you're more. Not accent. Asian enough. You, what you mean? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, you you gotta. Can you do a little thicker accent? Can you want me be more Asian? Like, right. What do you mean be more Asian? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. made in Laos. Oh, yeah. I'm made in Laos. Yeah. Yeah. I'm made in Laos. How 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 one hundred percent? Tone down your English. Tone down your English a little bit. It reminds me of David Chappelle. Yeah. Remember he said. Uh, can you make it a little bit more black? Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think I like I said, I think you know my my thing that I always leave. Like, I want to give a community and any Asian kids that yeah, are yeah. interested in the industry, reach out to mentors, man. Yeah, there yeah. are people that are that actually genuinely want to give back. Yeah. It's not about mm-hmm. the money; it's about leaving legacy. We talk about legacy. Yeah, that is the whole idea. So. So, KB, is there any other Lao actors or actress in, in this industry? There is a small community. There's, I always refer back, that there's a two OG in this industry. <laughs> okay. Ova Suopang, who's in LA. He's actually from Hawaii. Okay. He, he does a theater called Tita. Him and I are probably the OG of OGs. Sure. We actually went to study theater. He actually studied at USC, mm. acting school. Mm. Wow. I went to Fresno State. With a theater degree. So you actually got a theater degree. I have a theater degree. Do you need it in the industry? I only show you. My, I, I have it on the wall. Said so I have a degree. It, it took me 10 years, man. I was got back it. <laughs> it, was, it was a paper to remind me. I actually went to college. Is, is it, remind me that you owe student loan. Hey, no. No. That is true. There's an Asian in him that, hey, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to go to college for it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, it's, yeah. It's, it's good. But technically, you know, if you have the drive. Everything that I learned in the film industry, I was learning. You learn the history of theater, right? You learn Shakespeare. You learn all that stuff. Great. It's good. You have to have the fundamental. Once you learn the rules of the fundamental, you, 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 they say, right? right? Break it. You can break it. Right. But stay in this. You have a circle. You stay with it. But man, 
I'm a crazy ass mad Laotian, right? <laughs> I stay in a circle, but man, I I make I make sure I bring the sexy and spiciness in. Yeah. I make sure I bring the extra padak right, in it. Right, so right. I make it my own. I can control it. Because no one controls me except me. Right. So like I said, you know, it's yeah, I I get it. I I get the the trials and the jubilation. Trials, yeah, yeah. I get rejection, but I wasn't getting anything. I had to learn the business. Yeah. yeah. It's show business. Yeah, right. If I'm gonna learn to play the game, I'm gonna go all in. Yeah. And that's just what it is. It's learning how to play all the in. game. Yeah. You know, people yeah. said, you know, hey, you got plan B, plan C. I said, yeah. shit, what the hell is that plan A, plan B, plan C? I got no plan B, plan C. I got only one plan. I just plan A, man. Yeah, yeah. Plan B should yeah. make plan A work. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, if you if you don't make, think of plan A, you don't think of plan B. You, you go all in, all out. Yep, I, yeah. I, tell, I was telling him, like, in yep. this business, you gotta be sharp. Yes. Yep. You can't be guppies. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because everyone is a shark, right? Yes, I mean, you to. gotta be yeah. a shark in you know, order to You know, but it's not, it's not about, about arrogance. Remember, think, oh, that stuff is that self confidence, arrogance. It didn't mm. happen overnight. It's right, just right. take, you learn from your mistake, failure, rejection. You're like, oh my gosh, you, I almost gave up. But you know what? I said, I'm not, I'm not, I gotta stick with this stick sucker. With I gotta fight with it. What kept you going? Yeah. It comes, goes back to the fundamental of being loud. Being loud. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Being That's, loud. You, you mentioned the mad Laotian. Yeah. Sweet and spicy. Yeah. You, you, sexy you use spicy. that term a lot in, in all your social okay. media I'm posts. Gonna explain, I want to explain you yeah, what sexy and spicy. I follow KP for many years. Let me explain. Mad really? Laotian. What is that? Okay, the mad Laotian, like, you know, everybody's be loud and stuff. I'm mad. Crazy. It's goodness. You got to have somebody that stirs up. When you go in a room, like, if I've gone to an event party. You see everybody like, oh, wait, wait, there's no one like me. They don't look like me. <laughs> yeah. I'll come in. <laughs> I stir it up. Yeah. I'm not the quiet one. You think I'm a quiet guy? Quiet, but I am quiet. I'm actually an introvert, but I had to learn to be an extrovert mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. the years. To, if I'm gonna not open my mouth, I'm gonna get nothing. Yeah. If I don't say yeah. nothing, I'm gonna get not gonna get fed. If I'm not gonna say nothing, none of my friends, people, my people are not gonna get on the table. Yep. Yep. I, I have to say something. Right. Yeah. I don't care what you say and tell me. Yeah. You know what? I make my path. Yeah. So that's what the Madly Ocean. Wow. I'm crazy. Yeah. I'm the Madly Ocean. Sex and spice, and let me talk about this. <laughs> yeah. is, this is like my, my logo, my t shirt, yeah. my brand. Yeah. Okay, sexiness, it's confidence. Yeah, yes. right. It's right. all about looks, it's yeah. about it's know who you are, how you carry yourself, right. persona. Right. Yeah. Right. You walk in, you own it. Yes, you know, not about the bling, you know, you can you carry yourself when you know yourself, when you have true value yourself. That is sexy. Yes. Yeah, it's please. more of an internal. Yeah, yes. yes. Inter- yeah. It's more please, internal, please, which, which brings it out, right. brings it out, it brings it out. It's not an outside confidence, right? It's more like inside and yep. then you're just walking you know it because you're you, strong you know, you know it know? please, yeah. please yeah. show Lucky how to do it because he always try to be sexy and cool I am don't know how to do it he can't do it he can't do it he's just gotta do it you just don't believe it yet you say you what's up I'm I'm a bajara badak just open me up man you know the smell's gonna come he says it but he doesn't feel it yet he didn't teach him a little bit he hasn't been fermented for a while yeah so so the word spiciness you know it's Lao yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Bo-pit, bo-sap. Bo-pit, bo-sap. Yeah. the oh, spicier no. the better, better. Yeah. yeah spiciness means it's risk mm-hmm. we gotta take risk man mm-hmm. yes i like it's that. all about mm-hmm. take risk mm-hmm. yes that's spicy yeah. right right it's gonna burn you but you gotta keep moving forward yeah, yeah. right it's gonna knock you down like i said you gotta get up there's gonna be all kinds of people gonna throw the sun of rub in your eye you gotta open your eyes you gotta fight we especially kun hao kun lao we got to fight. We're the new. We're the new. Amen we call it. That. We yep, have yep. the other Asian. Like, you know, I'm, yep. okay, I, 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 we're the jungle Asian. We're going to come yep. out. Right, right, we got to right. fight. Yep. And that's what spiciness is. Right. We all associate the spiciness. Yep. Right, right. You know, and it's a different level yeah. of spiciness. Right, right, this goes right. for like all of Southeast Asian because Absolutely. we're all from yeah. jungles. Of Absolutely. course. We, yeah, of course. Just because I know one of our uh, partners not here is Sam, but yeah, we got to represent for, for the Cambodian folks out there Absolutely. for him yeah. too. Absolutely. That's, that's what, what that's when I say UFC sexy. Hey, someone's got to keep it sexy. It's yeah, right, right. You know, you always see my hashtag yeah, sexy. Yeah, yeah, spicy. All the time. Lucky sit down. All the time. You know, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> that is, see, for our viewers too, you got to keep it sweet and spicy. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So yeah, that's yeah. that's what the, men- I have a menta- different mentality. Yeah. You know, I even think that I'm, is a good mentality to have because in our culture itself, we don't have that that uh persona right that that it's okay to be that way right we want to yeah. be like hey you know what you're talking too loud let's tone it down a little it's bit. okay to be loud you know? no it's absolutely yeah. it's okay to be loud it's, it's like okay to be loud. And, and people but my running joke hey kp you too loud yes i know i'm loud Come on. <laughs> thank you huh thank yeah, you yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you but, but i don't know to me like um because i was always been taught to be loud to be 
you know, better than everybody else, but then out in public, you got to be quiet. Like, it's always been a contradiction on what they teach you in your family on how to be, but when you're in public, you need to be quiet and timid. So for now, like, you know, seeing you actually and doing what you've been taught and being out there and, you know, you're an introvert, but yet you want to be out there and spicy and let people know who you are and, you know, be what you really are taught to be. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, you breaking glass ceilings so for kids or you know younger generations that wants to get into where you're at and don't know how to come into their own self like that what kind of advice do you have so the one thing i always tell people is and i'll say it across the board no matter what culture you are yeah if it's the way i bring it you got to be true to who you are you mm -hmm. cannot be afraid because we're too afraid because we what what we are trying to get everyone's approval Yes. Mm -hmm. To make, to validate us, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Whatever, especially mm -hmm. in the community. Mm -hmm. They say, be quiet on cost. You know what? It's okay. But you got to know who you are. Our parent has taught us something. Yes, because they come from that generation. But if for us to even long term, we still hold on to that. But at the same time, we also have, we have a, a, a spirit of creativity, individuality. Individuality is about me, 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 but it's not about me. It's a, there is a group of us. Right, right, right. Yep. And so for me to, I have a, there's a place and a time to be aggressive. There's a place and time to open your mouth. Right. You know, I am I'm a big proponent. I have, I'm not a big, I'm a big believer in things that I see. I love reading the, the art of war. The concept of what the art of war is the concept. There's a, in philosophy in our own Lao culture community, we can see things. We know where it is. We we watch, we learn, we observe, we attack. That's the thing we do. And not only that, but also, you know the concept they say fake it to make it? Yep. I don't believe in that. Because you're no. bullshitting yourself. You're yes, lying to yourself. You're and fronting again, yourself. The more fronting yourself, yeah. the more, yourself, more, yeah. more BS you got to put yourself. You know yeah, what? I'm yeah. true. I'm straight. You are. Yeah, because that changed who you are Absolutely. in the process, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So if you're, if, you, if you're trying to pretend to be someone you're not, mm -hmm. you're basically wasting a lot of time. Yeah. And when you get to that point where you really have to be yourself, you have to start all over. Yeah. You're lost yeah. again. Yeah. You're you know, yeah, you know, you're yeah. lost and then you don't know where to go. And then now you're questioning your identity as far right. as, oh, who am I really? So like, now we talk about being proud of you, especially with yeah. young kids who want to get in the industry. Guys, yeah. be proud. Don't, don't, don't sell. They say don't sell out. Don't sell yourself short for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go with something, go with four attack, go all in. All in. <laughs> I'm not going to, not to stereotype, but you know, we love to gamble. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're going to gamble, gamble in this. Yeah. Go all in in your career, yeah. in what you do in life, in what uh, don't don't hold back. Yes. Yeah. Gamble we, we have a we have a problem in this uh, the, in the reality of gambling is. Right. But if you're going to gamble in anything else, gamble on yourself. Put all in on yourself because you got to believe in you. But in order to believe in yourself, you have to build, you have tools you got to get. If you're going to go to the industry, going in without knowing anything, there are mentors reach out. These are things, there are steps. Every, everything in life has a rule. Process. Yes. Mm -hmm. A process. You got to know the game, how it operates. You can't jump. Yep. So the, so the people, the, the thing I phrase, I tell people all the time, what I do in the industry, is that don't play a chess game with me. If you don't know the rules. No, no. <laughs> don't play a chess game with me because you have Master Connect 4. Oh. You have <laughs> Master Connect yeah. 4. Yeah. Do not go in the industry you think you know everything because you right. can smell it. Yeah, people in the industry can understand your bullshit. Wow, because you gotta know if you're gonna play the game, better know the rules. Right. In any industry, yeah. So especially in my industry, it's a doggy dog world. Yeah, yes, they yeah. spit you out, bro. From the stories that we hear, <laughs> man, it it is a doggy dog yeah. world, Every you know. Business, and then yeah. you know, not everyone makes it. Yeah. Everybody goes to Hollywood thinking they're gonna make it and yeah. be somebody. And yeah. man, there are a lot of people that Persist don't make it. Persistent, severance, hard work. Because of how I grew up, because I'm from Lao, because of my refugee experience, because of what my family went through, because I saw my aunts and uncle, that is the best example. That's perseverance, guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To leave everything from there, to come here, to build something for the future, it's not, it's not about them. Right. It's, they think about what? Us. And so for me, same thing too. I gotta move forward because I know I'm. A, I have a target on my back right. and in front. Right. I see people stab me in front and back, but it doesn't stop us. Did you me. know that? Like you know, going through the industry and your experience and stuff. Did you know that walking into it? Um, I know you said you had. Um, you look up to your parents and stuff, but yeah. they didn't walk your path. They didn't walk your journey. But as you were going through it, did 
you kind of knew or what you were getting yourself into or you kind of had to like take it as they come? It's both way. I knew what I was getting into, mm. but at the same time, I love challenges. Right. I love to see what's ahead. Right. I love competitiveness. Sports made me competitive. Yeah. Fighting to, to, to have a voice made competitive. This was like, I've, I'm going to go in, I'm going to focus, and I'm going to focus like a, like a radar right. target. Mm-hmm. Right. Because I knew I was going to get rejected. I knew I wasn't getting, being broke with $2, whatever, in an account, eating whatever. I did whatever I can to sacrifice, sleep in my car, right. you know, wow, do what I can, three, yeah, four, five sure. jobs, just to make sure I get myself up. Not giving up on your, we call dreams and right. goals and right. purpose. And yeah. So yeah. You know the the Jeffrey Dahmer movie that just came out. You started it. Like there was a lot of lot of publicity around this, right? It was it's a big thing now, especially with the police officer getting their pensions yeah. last year. So yeah. It, now that it kind of went to that mainstream a little bit. Sure. Are you getting a lot of more attention as far as your acting role? Have have people reached out to you and congratulate you? And how does it make you feel being a loud actor in that sense? That you know. <laughs> You know, it's it's flattering to get international sure. messages from mm. South America, from Colombia, wow. from from Argentina, from Portugal. I had a friend from Spain send me a clip that he was watching in Spain in Spanish. I said, "Wow, my Spanish is really good. <laughs> my, my 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 French is pretty good too." Yeah. So I get international. I'm getting also here as well locally. I'm also getting people from our community wow. sending me some great words, some encouragement, uh, right. representation. I also get the backlash as well too. So of yeah. course, but it's flattering and it's a blessing. But I knew my value way before. Sure. I was sure. working. I was doing things already. It was just opportunity meets its time. Sure. And I take it. You have to seize that opportunity. And when Netflix came out, I didn't know. We don't all know what's going to be. I got hired to do the show. And whatever happened, happens. Boom. I was booking already before. But since he came out, there's an opportunity. Like the Netflix with Netflix. with the Michelle Yeoh, I still have to audition. <laughs> yeah, I still gotta do like everybody else. I'm going up five hundred to a thousand people. Wow! But I have now an opportunity that I've never gotten before. I've spent thirty plus years. The last two years have been, I'm, things are opening up. Things are like they see. Like I value myself first and right. foremost. You gotta mm-hmm. value yourself. Right. But when other people see that, they recognize that. You know what? Other people have seen it, but we just need that opportunity. Mm. Like I said, we need to break that barrier. Right. We need to break right. that glass. Mm-hmm. Help, help me understand the um, the auditioning process for acting. Is it different than like from a reality TV show? I mean, what what happens when you sign up, and what's okay. the? So I'm gonna tell you the, the the process. Like you know, when a new show comes up or television or movie, they call they do a a casting call. They'll set up breakdown mm. of the description if it's union or non unions, who is involved into it. So. You have other agencies as well, too. Like, there's hundreds and hundreds of talent agencies out there with clients, thousands and thousands of clients. All okay. fighting for the same... For the same wow. role. Remember, wow. oh, man. nowadays, since the pandemic, everybody can videotape audition. This is not just in the United States. This is global as well, too. Wow. Oh, so the so market you, you have opened bigger. The market is oh, open. Man, yeah. So once you see the audition, and then you submit the audition with your headshot, resume, or demo reel, without any experience, it's like... It's, it's called, they got, a, they got a filter. So the casting people are filtering these auditions to make sure they look like, they stuff, and they, now, even before you get the opportunity to, to read, they, 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 they break it down to like, so 1,000 to 500 to 200 to 20 people. Okay, these 20 people, we want to have them read. Right. So they say, by the way, we would like you to read this character. Can you put yourself on tape? They make they make these decisions based on just a headshot and not your, just a headshot. Res, yeah, one is one one of like many. Step one. That's many right. steps. Step one: your training, your your experience. Right. So they they got I got the the side. So if you watch the series, is the court scene? It's my first court scene. Yeah. And I had to speak Pasa Lao. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. and in English, and so I'm my Lao is okay. It's not. I'm still broken Lao English, like right, the sixth right, grade yeah. level kind of thing. Sure. Right. But I had to go to like a. Uh, I went to Tutu. No, and I said, Tutu, 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 can you can I help me? Yeah, so yeah. she helped me kind of like uh, make sure that oh, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. And I had another person just to match, right? Yeah. In my audition, I had totally my accent was Thai Sam Nua. Totally Thai Sam Nua, right? Uh-huh. And so I did the audition. Okay. When you audition as an actor, you just go about and you do business. I might hear a week, two weeks later, and they call uh they write me an email again and say, We would like to redirect. Means redirect it. Can you do the scene again? Mm. But want to give you some note. This note she gave, they tell me, can you give it more a thicker accent? Mm. 
Uh-huh. So in my video, you see my page, you actually should see the, be, the before and after. So I had to put a little thicker accent. I usually don't like doing thicker accent. And you have to memorize yep. every line on the line. Absolutely. You have yeah. to line, line by line. Line by line. Because they don't have that cue? Like, um, no, 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 no. That's, no? That's, that's, that's more like reporters. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, okay, and okay. stuff. We, in, in, you actually tele- like remember. Oh, yeah, oh, we have shoot. to memorize that yeah. stuff. You know, you memorize it. And then, you know, I did that and they get call back. And you see a call back. And then you don't hear anything else. At the same time. From the Dharmas, I was doing Shang-Chi. It was a background role with, with Ova. Yeah. You were in Shang-Chi okay. too? You were in I was Shang-Chi a too? background role when he opened the scene and was walking through before the bus. Uh-huh. I always say, hey, you got to find the Asian Waldo. I'm one of those guys. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that one of the process. And once they, sometimes they do what we call a uh, Zoom. Usually they, in the back old days, they go to the, uh, the studio to audition live. Because of the pandemic, everything is to video now. You might meet Zoom audition. You set your time. You're nervous as heck already. Because now you get to, to meet the director, the producer, the people are the decision makers. Yeah, yeah. The casting director is like the, the mediator. They bring the best of the best. And once you audition, you do your business, and they say, hey, by the way, we would like to offer you ex- the role. Bro. And then they'll send you a, a, a general contract. And at the time, I didn't have an agent. But do I you need an agent or no? To get in the big role, yeah. Oh. But I didn't do, but I knew how to negotiate because I interned as an agent. I managed yeah, talent. So I knew, I knew yeah. the business. But then once I sign, I sign with an agent, then I fire the agent because it's a relationship, man. Yeah, right. It's yeah. a relationship. If you're not, it's not about the money. I'll get me the audition. I'll make the money. You take the 10%. Yeah. We'll so they, they take, they, they take the percent. 10% manager, like, depends. Mm-hmm. 10%, 15 yeah. manager might be different. So, so this a, is more like who you know then, right? In order to get in. It's about relationship. Relationship. Relationships. So yeah. with Dahmer, this, this stuff, I got in. I thought it was the one episode coming in and mm-hmm. we, I got in, I went to the fitting, did all that stuff, makeup, they paid for everything. I was getting my nose tested, like the COVID test three times a week. Going back, I was driving back and forth from Fresno to LA for six months. Wow. wow. Like every week or is it like daily? It depends on like testing, the schedule shoot, things yeah. like that. So yeah. going back and forth. Then I had to join SAG, you know. Oh, um, SAG? Screen Actors Guild. This is a union. Okay. So this this was a SAG project. I so I had to join SAG. Um, the pay grade is different. Okay, SAG. If you join SAG, yeah. So for instance, you do extra role. I'm gonna tell you what the industry. You just be in the background, a Chinese restaurant yeah. or the patron. A non-union gets 125 bucks, 100 bucks, right? Yeah. A day the, or the, just for that? A scene? day. The a day, day rate. Day rate. You might be new for two hours, eight hours doesn't matter. You get that much. Oh. For a union person, Dang. you might get you get 187 dollars, 85 to 187 dollars a day. Then oh, if you go overtime, time and a half, right? So mm-hmm. now in when you get into a higher position role for guest star, co-star, one day rate can go from eighteen hundred, eighteen hundred to five thousand dollars a day. Wow! I don't care if they use you like four hours, three hours, the twelve hours, you still get paid. Now that's for day rate. If you imagine you want to set five days, yeah, it's math, right? Wow. Yeah. You know, as Asian, we know math. Yeah, yeah, we know, yeah, yeah, we yeah, know yeah. math. Oh, we know man, like yeah, how yeah. much <laughs> the math. The math that we know is like how much I'm losing, how much I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's Asian yeah. math. I know. Yeah, yeah. So the auditions process, it's a, it's a very, it's a process. It's so daunting, then. Wow. Like, yeah. So so there, it's, yeah. it's such a mental thing. Yeah. Because you have to you have to audition to, to be able to be picked, to be able to be asked for. You're going out against a thousand and a thousand other people across the country. Now, when you're doing this, is it out of your pocket when you're um, auditioning? Yeah, auditioning and doing no, all no. that, or is so it- people. How do you find audition? There are certain professional sites you you join to get the breakdown, you know. And if you have an agent, they they'll they'll pay the service to get the breakdown because television show, right. for extras, yeah. music videos, commercials, commercial can make good, a lot of great money, man. Yeah, and also voiceover as well too. So yeah. I did some voiceover back in the day where, um, I did a, a voiceover a video game. You know, that's those kind of things. Sleeping Dog was a video game I did. Oh, you did a voiceover for yeah, Sleeping the, Dog? The, yeah, I did a lot of the, the, the game. Like a, that's like a Grand Theft yeah. Auto video it? game, yeah, but yeah, it's yeah. based out of like a Chinese yes, mafia, mafia or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I did the voiceover gig for that one. For that gig, I got $5,000 to come in for like a like six hours to, to do the voiceover. Wow. Yeah. wow. Man, that's crazy. And so money goes up and down, but that's the business side. Yeah. But the process is you got to audition. And that is like reality TV show too. They're going to cast you send the headshot you send your videos they're gonna look at personality you gotta match up nothing is personal it's all about business it's business, business. Wow. Yeah. like mm-hmm. the agents too like you, you said 10 percent. so yeah if i'm an agent yeah. i got 20 actor actors Absolutely. under me that's a lot it's a lot of money yeah lot, not everyone's gonna book maybe you get like right, right, five right. actors booking and you've got another actors booking for big role and that's that 
it's add up. It's stock up. market, man. Stock market. You know the yeah. business of stock market. Yeah. That's what we are. We're a commodity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're looking at it as yeah. a commodity. Yeah. We like are a commodity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, like, like everybody do shows. Like the more followers, the more people we have, we have leverage. We have leverage. We we can use that to for bigger pay. Like some of his major stars, they get three four million dollars a picture, yeah. bro. Yeah, a picture. Hey. Look at the Rock. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. oh he yeah, just yeah. twenty, isn't he? Ooh, ooh, yeah. I, right, 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 right. <laughs> my pocket. Okay, so I know, like you Just said, take that my picture. Thing, you know, there's no um, I, like you look towards your family for inspiration. Yeah, but is there any actor or anybody that you will be starstruck over? You well, know, have I, you been starstruck? So, over? so, so this is a question I get asked all the time. Am I starstruck? I don't get starstruck. Really? Because you know why? They're my colleagues. Yeah, yeah. they're my coworkers. I respect yeah. them. Yeah. They resp- I'm an important part of the puzzle as they are. Yeah. I, yeah, we respect everybody has different level. I'm not like I'm Star Trek. Oh my gosh, no! Yeah. I'm like, look, yeah. they like they have their private lives too. They 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 have they're families humans, too. Man. They're yeah, humans too. Yeah, no, no, I get it. Yeah. Because like, I mean, I, I'm not saying like go out there and worship them. You starstruck, but, Charlie. But I respect. Like, Charlie gets starstruck yeah, easily. Oh, yeah. You know, but if Jackie yeah. Chan come in, like you know. I could be a little giddy, like a little school girl. Janet like, Jameson? Oh, of course. Like, Janet Jameson? Oh, my you know, God. I watch know, her all the I'm gonna, time. I'm, I'm going to tell you yeah. about Jackie Chan. I was almost a stand-in when he was going to do shoot a film in Hawaii. Really? Wow. I was going to be almost a stand-in for him. Wow. wow. Dude, I like, I you do go- kind of look like Jackie Chan. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> I look at you. I do my own stunt. <laughs> I do my own stunt. <laughs> like a fool. <laughs> yeah. Hey, jump up that 12-foot wall. How do you do that? Easily. <laughs> No, no, yeah, it's it's I I meet a lot of people and I feel like it's no, I respect them, but I I do love watching actors like actors. We love and learn from each other. I learn mm-hmm. a lot from watching my colleagues, and I, we learn. It's playing. Yeah, it's trust. Yeah, mm-hmm. acting is about trust. Yeah, I trust you to memorize sixteen pages, bro. Yeah, yeah. We gotta shoot. I wow. you trust me? I don't got. I don't have a chance to rehearse with you. We don't have time. We're yeah. gonna come together. They hire us for a reason. There's millions of dollars at stake. So we better step up our A game, just like any sports NFL. Everybody gets drafted every year, right. but you got to maintain your value. You got to maintain your training, right? Right. Etc. Who, who would you look forward to working with? Oh, I could just a couple people. I mean, I would. I know everybody wants to work with De Niro, right? Robert De Niro, of course. Oh yeah, of yeah, course, yeah, De Niro. Yes, yeah, 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 Leonardo DiCaprio, yeah. all those big guys. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but for me. As actor, we look forward for the next project, next gig. Yeah, next gig. Every gig, whatever's available, next whatever's gig. opportunity, yeah. we, we we go in, we do the best. It's all about when we go. I professionally, if you look good, do great impression, you got good energy, man. I want to work with that person again. Yeah. They're yeah. gonna bring you back. Yeah. You know what? If you ever work for with Kevin Hart or Jackie Chan, let me know. I'll run coffee for you guys. <laughs> like, dude, those are the two great, guys I want to meet. Great guys. You know, like I said, everybody, the personality. They, you see them in front, great, but they all, they also they're, a lot of the actors are close to each other. They're, they 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 like become family. We become family, yeah, right? Yeah, we protect of each other. So who yeah. who who is the Lao person now? I mean, uh-huh. if we talk about besides yourself, KP, who who is that person in Hollywood that's doing it? If you know that Lao person, so I was talking about earlier. There's a group of called Los Angeles. Uh huh. It's a bunch of actors, writers, directors. That are in La- in LA, mm. they're of, of Lao, Mo- wow. Southeast Asian descent. Laos Angeles? Yeah. Laos, Laos Angeles. Laos, okay, yeah. I'm gonna shout out to Laos Angeles. Uh, like yeah. uh, uh, Sydney. Sydney is another actress. She did well. She was on Z Nation. She mm. was the doctor. Okay. And she did What's couple Z Nation? Z Nation. Zombie the zombie, Nation. Yeah, Zombie Nation. She was one, the, the, the doctor, and she's a Lao. She okay. was in business, became an actress. Mm. And there's other people that are doing really great that are, in, you know, even if you talk about the Hmong actors, the Duo Moa. Dua Moore was Spider. He played Spider in Gran Torino. Oh, he also okay. did. Yeah, yeah. He did. He was Paul on the live uh, Mulan. There was a lot of uh, Southeast Asian, yeah, that played that role too. He from Fresno. Yeah. So some of those guys. Yeah. So so if you know the van. So it's not, there we are. Yeah. We are. There are some Southeast Asian are doing waves of actually from Fresno, like the Vang Brothers. Wow. You know, all those guys. Yeah. But in terms of actual Lao ethnic wise, there's some new one to come in. The younger one to transition to become actors, writers, director. That's all we need, more writers, directors, telling us stories. But yeah, we want to get into to be involved in the other mainstream. But those are great. If you get a chance to music, go, go to Los, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Is it a big group? or It's a group that's growing because 
You know, like we said, you know, what is that smell? We all kind of gather. It's a badak. Oh, we all gather it's together. Yeah. <laughs> all badaks over yes. here, guys. You know what I'm saying? Like we we, yeah. we kind of want to, we gravitate to right, each other. Right, we right. all have, we, we want to encourage each other. Right. You know, these are things that different, gen- they're younger than me. Right. Different generation. I see the enthusiasm. I see the drive they have. They gave up certain industries. Some of them, like you said, went to college, got degrees, business stuff. They, they weren't happy. This is what makes them happy. I know right. there's going to be some struggle, but if they're persistent at what they do, they're going to be successful. They're going to do take opportunity they can. So now what we're doing is we're trying to write more. Mm-hmm. I was supposed to go to Laos to direct a film several years ago, but the pandemic hit. So that's going to put on a table. That would have been great. So I'm hopefully going to be working with more loud, actually Lao, Lao people here and also Yuman Lao. So that's wow. the whole idea was to bridge, yeah. like become the Sapan, right? So yeah. like the yeah. bridge. So uh, you were talking about a project or a documentary that you want to start working on. Yes. Talk a little bit about that. So the, I'm, I'm going to be turning 50. Sex and spicy padak all over. Yeah. <laughs> I, I so don't care. I, how you stay young is put a padak on your face. Oh, God. <laughs> That's the facial it's, cream, right? You know, facial cream. It's, it's facial also attitude, right? We, uh, <laughs> it we, is, yeah. You look at our, uh, our parents. They're, they're, when you're happy, your energy, what happens? You just you, the vitality, right? Yes. So I wanted to do this thing called, um, have you eaten? We all know that phrase. That's a coach, yeah. right? Yeah, you might we, we, we it's all called we welcome others. So, right, right. I want to do is to take this Amtrak around the country basically, five, seven, whatever country that like, states I'm going to go through that go north Amtrak. and come back down. I want to say, let everybody know I'm coming to the town to visit them, the family, to see how our community lives in different towns, different states. We oh, don't know, man. there might somebody in Idaho, Montana, I've met, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you know, that's why we reach out to a community. Not just our our, lock, our Southeast Asian community. So once I go through that, I want to do is just be encouraged, do workshop, talk about our stories, document, talk about yeah. how they live, how they came here, and go on to next next. Uh, I'm trying to do for a month kind of thing, wow. just just travel around, do that, because there's a bigger project that I want to do from that. I want to go back to where I was born, I was made, is going back to our motherland, wow. Dumu Lao. So I want to hopefully go fly back to Lao. And go backtrack and step and where visit what I remember when I was there, and I still have a lot of memories. My last memory of Laos, I'll tell you guys, is when you escape, you got to go through the checkpoint to the right. police station, right? There was a police station right across the Mekong River, mm-hmm. where all the grandparents, parents were being searched, asked you all kinds of questions. You got to hide your goal, wherever it is, give it to the kid because you know they're gonna take that stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. you're not gonna have it. So the last picture I remember you Mulao was like probably early in the morning, about six or seven, like real cold, standing across watching Mulao for the last time with the dew kind of thing. Yeah. That is the last picture I remember. And so I want to start with that. Wow. And then end it me yeah. into yeah. the at that. So because I want to know there's a full because I'm not just doing it for me, but I'm also doing documents for my children and generations to come. And Things I remember, the Lao Mung Lao has changed a lot. How old were yeah. you? How old were you that time? Uh, Hopi. Hopi six. 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 And years you old. remember? And you remember the Absolutely. actual? Yeah. Wow. So, you Mung Lao, I I stay in Dong Dok. There's a small village out of of Vingchan. Dong Dok, there's a university school. Dong Dok, Dong Dok. You know what it's known for? It's the performing arts school. Wow. One of the best performance art school, Yumeng Lao. So it was already instilled, was already instilled in you. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. I play at a soccer. Field. I yeah. ran at that yeah. school when I was a kid. You know, it's like, and when they told me, it's like, oh my gosh. So, you know, like me, like I uh, learned, I went out to Google Earth. I looked down, kind of. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of, I remember. Right. I'm like, whoa, it's changed a lot. It's a different thing. But at the same time, it brings back memories. Maybe that yeah. feeling once you get there, right? You're yeah. standing there. That, that feeling is all going to come back. So, yeah, that's, that's the tough. I, I, I still have families there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and I still have family members that are, you know, we visit back. We have stuff there, but it's, that's part of us who we are. In your opinion, do you think Laos have like a like a movie there is industry? A, there or? is a slowly building an industry. So there's a girl named Maddie Doe. Maddie Doe is actually was born in the south, uh, uh, like South Southern California called Laos. She went back to Mong Laos and she did a short film, and she's well known to director. And then I can't say it, I don't want to reveal, but she's there's a big thing coming out from her. She's doing a lot of great things. I just had a, a great meet to Los Angeles with Maddie Doe. She's currently being a guest teacher professor at at USC. Talk okay. about, she's doing a lot of great things. Mm. Uh, a Laotian girl born in America went back to live in Mong Lao and do a lot of film festival. And other guys do have Lao vision, other people doing film as well too. So I've been been friend of them. They've been studying you like, internationally. 
one of the guy, I can't his name, he actually went to NYU through the study, went back doing filming in Lao. Wow. And so I, I, it's a small industry. With the last, you know, Mung Thai, Vietnam, they have all the industry. Lao is slowly, it's growing, mm. it's yeah. economy, it's more media. You guys watch the music video, some of these young kids, they're into this whole new music genre. Yeah. 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 And now all the generations are like, whoa. So they're coming to the Sabaidi Fest. So yeah. that's a new generation. Right. But they're talented. Like, like we have what we learn here. We can work. We That's like bridging back to our, our people. And that's what we want to do to do that exchange. We understand the politics. Everything is politics. But understand that that's the old politics, right? Right. But for the new generation, like I want to be able to do business, to bring connection to our community out there and with the community here as well. So that's my goal. One of my goals. So. Have you ever acted like um, on green screen? I mean, absolutely. Yeah. How, how difficult is that to, to like you know when we see the movie, we see the scene, but like the actors. So you know, so, so this is a good question you asked. So the training from theater, the green screen is what we're, we're good at. You don't see anything, but right. they tell you what you have to visualize. You have to put imagination to it. Wow. What? I think so, that would be the hardest thing yeah, to do. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's, a, hard, it's, it's, huh? a, it's yeah. a mental. Yeah, Just right. like when you watch Beowulf, right? Everything was screen screen yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. But you have to imagine it's there, but it's like a like a, a ball, a tennis ball, like a creature. There's yeah. going to be CGI, all that later. You right. have to imagine, even acting. Like I'm, if I'm playing a role, like people say, how do you cry? And it's cute. It's like, it's, you have to. I pull my hair you, out of my, <laughs> my leg. Whatever you, people put, it's, you yeah. have to put that, you've you, you got to put your emotion. emotion. Yes. You, whatever you recall, whatever mm -hmm. it is you have, that's what about training. Right. In theater, we train that. We do a lot of uh, situation. We put ourselves into it. But also, in act, I do a lot of research too. I study, I research, I find out, I get ready. It's like anything we do. If I'm going to be a, something, I have to get in physical shape because I have to do a lot of, a lot of takes. In film, we do a lot of takes. And it's <laughs> yeah. mental. Do they, like, let's say they set up the scene, right? Okay. I mean, let's say there's like stairs or okay. whatever it is and everything is green. Sure. And let's say you're walking up the cliff or yeah. something like that, right? I mean, do they tell you, hey, you got to go this way, this way, this is the scene? And so so there, when you have the script, okay, yeah. the script is your blueprint. It's right. the, There's a dialogue and it has description. You have to kind of imagine Right. what the it seems about and so when you get into set you work with the director the director has a vision your job as an actor is to to bring that vision from what the director and you are so we work together he's going to tell you this is a snare what's going to happen well, let's do it okay we shoot the scene okay let's do it again let's do it mm -hmm. again until he gets the right take sometimes you have three cameras four cameras you have one camera so you have to understand angles you know, you understand the acting technique, but also you have to understand the technical technique. Oh, man. The close-up shot, the wide yeah. shot. And you're memorizing the sucker. Like, you're doing an emotional scene. Yeah. Yeah. I just did a short film. It's going to be based on Asian hate by Osa Kon, who's a Cambodian guy. It's going to come out. I had my first night scene, I had to do an emotional scene. And the last night scene, I had to do an emotional scene. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That's mental. Yeah. That's yeah. like wow. getting yourself like, I just can't cry. I just got to, I have to channel it yeah. in. Yeah. yeah. And so, for instance, when I did Dahmer, okay, you know, Evan Peters, they would talk about he does, he has a process. Everybody has a process. After I did Dahmer, it took me about a month just to decompress. Wow. wow. So, the, were you like a, what were those method actors or? Everybody, no? I, Everybody has a process. There's people that believe in method acting. I come from different... So when you train, you come from different school of thoughts, right? Yeah. You got Meisner, Uta Hagen, Stanislas. Stanislas is, is what the method is. So these are terms. If you... I study theater, I understand yeah. who they are. Yeah. If you are Joe Schmo that just went into acting, you have no clue who these right. guys are. That's us right so now. So these people yeah. that are going to Hollywood thinking they could become actor without taking classes or anything they, they're so at a you, disadvantage yeah you watch a movie right now so yeah. most a lot of the lead roles that are playing they're not american they're australian yeah or they're from english, england right the english. Yeah, yeah why yeah. why is that because of the training they come from conservatory school acting schools they're big they come in here like they take it on mm -hmm. like i said i'm competing if i must say competition playing guys from the royal academy guys have been big major star in other other countries Yale Drama School, NYU, big USC film school. I'm a graduate from Fresno State. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I'm an University of Hawaii. Right. So right. what's the top schools now? The major top school uh, that are acting to is Juilliard. Mm -hmm. Juilliard is well-known performance arts school. Yale Drama. Yale. You got NYU, USC, UCLA, the top schools of yeah. acting. Wow. There's other schools as well, too. 
And so, if you're new, I said, learn the game. So if train, you said, train. I'm sorry. So if you said the green screen was the easy one, what's the toughest scene that you've acted in? Uh, green screen is never easy. Nothing yeah, is easy. Not, yeah. Or, yeah, but, easy. I mean, yeah, that hair, hair but, wrong. No, but, you but, heard but, it wrong. I'm, I'm right. saying, but but I'm saying from the from a trained actor, a green yeah. screen, from because I come from a stage acting. Yeah, I know the process. I, I it's about imagination. I already see the vision. Right. Okay, so I can be able to play the scene that is built around me. Okay, and so if you don't have no experience in acting, and like, what do I do? It's like you, you your body will tell you it's stiff. Mm-hmm. It looks. So the whole idea about acting, if I see you acting, I don't believe you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The concept of you have to live in the moment. Yeah. Be real in the moment. Right, right. Authentic. Yeah. And there's different levels of different kind of acting, like from Nickelodeon over the top to being minimalist, being subtle. In theater, you have to speak loud because you're performing a thousand people across the back. It has to be big. In film, it's opposite. The less is better. So this must be like one of those questions, but... <laughs> I have to ask this. No, ask. The naked scenes. Okay. The sex scenes. Okay. Is is it real? Yeah, it's real. Okay, okay. Well, I mean, I mean, no, no. They're, I mean, real, they're really naked. No, they're really naked, but like, okay. I know there's some scenes that, that you know, the more X-rated movies, they, they kind of show a little penetration. You talking about porn? No, soft that, porn. That, but like, so so here's, here's, here's now, there's a new <laughs> thing called, uh, uh, they call it like, Intimacy coordinator. Intimacy coordinator. So even oh, even I even I know even you know a scene with like those stuff, we're professional. We respect each other. There's yeah, there's yeah. a line we don't cross. Sure. There's body nudes, underwear, things that they do. If they feel comfortable with the nudity, that's up to them. But they know what they get into. But in reality, is you know we're prof- we we're professional. Performers. We're performers. Right, right. And we have to know. And some people cross <coughs> like this is the dark side of the industry. There is that dark side. We all know. Yes. That, that called the casting couch. Well, yes. I, oh, yeah. well, I, I, I think we, about this. We like, used to have a black couch before. Well, let let him talk about the casting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to know about this. <laughs> I, 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 I want to hear. Yeah. I want to hear about. I want to hear Lucky's couch. No, no, no. He was going to explain to us. No, no, no. You brought back memories because Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence. Okay. If you're not going anywhere near the casting couch with this question, I don't want to hear it. I know. Let's go back to the casting couch. Yeah, let's take it. Yeah, let's take it to the casting couch. Let's take it back. Let's go. Okay. 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 So were you a part of the casting couch? Yeah. No, so what is the casting <laughs> yeah, couch? Yeah, what is that? I mean, so that, is that? that's a very dark term. That's a very term. Like, right. There's a, a lot of people in the early industry, they get exploited. All right. If you yes. want to stuff, you got to do some extra, extra before you get cast. That's what the casting couch is. A lot of people take advantage. You know, you understand there's a dark side of the pedophilia, the grooming, the, the, the Harvey Weinstein, that situation. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Of all these things that didn't know to get the industry. So like those things are coming out. That it happened, but they also there's a, there's also the good side as well too. But but it's a lot of people don't understand the early stage. They're trying to cover a lot of things. They're trying to break that because people think you know it's all fun and game. But sometimes some people have sold their soul, man. All I gotta say, there's a yeah. Yeah. that's all I gotta say. You know, you that's why I said you gotta know who you are. Mm. There's certain things I would do not do. That's up to me. I can say no to a, show, uh, a certain films. I look at what the content is. If it's the content's not fit to where I stand, I'm not. I just tell my agent no. You have the power to say no, man. Right, right. Or yeah. especially in a situation, especially girls, because there's so look, there's so many beautiful girls in the industry. Come right, on, yeah, yeah, straight yeah, yeah. out, yeah. gorgeous, right? yeah, yes. gorgeous. But they don't have they don't have to sell themselves to. They get stereotypical and they know. These people already know. They know, like a when a shark smells blood. Yeah, that's what it is. They know already. They yeah. know already. They know. So if you don't understand the business and and protect yourself, remember when you're an actor, you're a business. Right. You're a commodity. You got to know your value. You got to also know how to protect your asset. Right. A, a protect what value you have. Right. Right. If you start getting a certain film, certain project, what do you get happen? You get pigeonholed. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of dark, right? The kid stars become. The dark side, like you know, like go to the other. They go to that, that that suki suki uh, industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. Oh man, that's crazy. Is that what happens to a lot of Disney star and Nickelodeon and kids? Some of them go through because they have they call momager parents managing, mm. and 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 it's all about them. It's not about the the interest of the kids, and that's where it's psychologically, they get screwed heavy into all these drugs, things drugs, like that. Yeah. You know, it's all about where they're at, who they are, because a lot of them are being groomed. 
And so, like I said, there's a dark side. A lot of parents, I, I want to get my kids into this. My kid's very talented. Every every kid's talented. And they don't yeah. know. Huh? We don't yeah. know the dark side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. got to be involved and you got to know who you deal with. Like I said, you got to surround people that are not not always a yes person. You got to surround people that are positive yeah. and that are good. If they're negative, bye. Hit the road, right. Jack. Because there's a lot of industry that, oh, we I see your son is Starbucks. You got to pay $5,000, $10,000. So the, the parents are paying for this, right? Wow. It's It's... Make takes money to you know to, to make, make money. money. Yeah. At the same time, there's a lot of people take advantage. This is the dark side of people are gullible. Hey, I can make you star. Hey, I, you got to pay this much to, to get this stuff, and and you only know who they are, and they yeah. drain your money. Yeah. Imagine the girls. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this you is leave where, everything like from you're from Nashville, or yeah. You leave mm-hmm. everything behind. You going, come over going, here, going for the dreams of being Hollywood star, right. and then what happened? Then yeah. it's the same. Get destroyed. The huh? same as the yep. music industry, man. Yeah. The yeah. same. Any things in the entertainment. There's the a dark side of it, but. Yeah. For me, being a loud person going to industry, I knew what I was getting to. I knew exactly to deal with. Yeah. I knew who the person said no. I, I do my due diligence. I said if I get into this wrong stuff, it's gonna come back and yeah. it's gonna hit my family. It's gonna hit my community. Right. And that's not where I want to be. I yeah. want to be a positive for my family. I want right. to be a positive for my Lao community. Right. Yeah. All right, Lucky. We'll go back to your question now. Yeah. He answers. Yeah. It wasn't was yeah. was yeah. a question. It was kind of referring to that because I remember. I read about Martin Lawrence, okay, and Tisha Campbell that played Martin, right? Yes. Yeah. They had a they had a a close up role where mm-hmm. they were kind of half naked, whatever, doing. But she said that he, he went too far. Okay. He he got he got hands where he needs to be. Sure. And she sued him. Yeah. She sued him for that. She like, sued him. Yeah. She sued yeah. him for it, and it was a big. This was during thing. a scene. Or? There was being a scene where yeah. they were on top of each other, where they're, they're supposed to just play a role, but Martin went too far. Yeah, there's a line across. Yeah, line across. So yeah, I just wanted to ask that. Does that happen? It, it does happen more often. It yeah. doesn't happen a lot of times when, especially the girls that does happen to them, they they're scared not to get the next job. Mm. That's yeah. the fear comes oh, so in. They don't say nothing. Same as mm. same as the guy too. Mm-hmm. That are things like Kevin Spacey, things like mm-hmm. that. It happens too. So there's a lot of things that they're afraid they're not going to get work because wow. there's such a power when you there's a, when somebody is a powerful position that make decision you you're like my god it's yeah. my, i gotta make my living yeah right. this is what i make. i gotta like, press him yeah yeah and so basically yeah. there when they have that leverage now they're like you know what i'm not gonna take it that's why a lot of people start coming out now because they they're like enough mm. they have that strength that where they can, they have the leverage to say you know what this is enough i'm not gonna take this anymore right and a lot of them a lot of them will, will make do the Hollywood thing, and but there's still independent films they go into, the other yep. projects go to. They don't want to fall into that stigma, but mm. there, there, there's that side too. So. Well, I mean, like Emilia Clark, the the nearest Targaryen from Game of Thrones, like she did a lot of nude scene in the mm. beginning. Yes, yes, and yes. like she wasn't comfortable with it. Yeah. And Jason Momoa was like, "Hey, you know you don't have to do it, right? You can tell them no." Yeah. So after that, like, if you watch season two to beyond four, that, mm-hmm. beyond that, like. She didn't have no nude scene. The only time she have a nude scene is when it's coming from a a position of power. Like when she burnt down that tent of, Mm -hmm. um, what was that, where all the chiefs was at, where she pretty Mm -hmm. much killed everybody. Mm -hmm. She did a nude scene for that just because Mm -hmm. of the position of power. But a lot of people didn't know that. Like you could say no. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's the thing about it. You know, like people feel feel like in the industry, you can't say no because the director, producer. You know what? It's okay. Money, that money is not gonna. You know, it's like it's it, it. you see money is going to throw you, right? Yep. But you have to say, you know what? I don't care if I get it. Like, well, people are like, well, that's a lot. I would do anything. Yeah, but you're selling yourself. Yeah, you're selling yep. yourself. And then, right. and then you're going to stay. Like, if you feel threatened, if you feel, uh, you know, these kind of things, like, you, that you don't feel comfortable, you can say no. Is there any, like, um, department or agency that kind of regulate that oh, stuff? Uh, they, now they're beginning to. They're mm. watching because now that's why people join the union, like SAC, Actors Skill. Right. They have things that are guidelines. Before, I mean, before they said all that, you know, kids were working more than hours than anything. They're not supposed to right. because of labor law. Right. Yeah. Kid, when kids, like I work with a lot of parents, when kids get into the industry, they can only work a certain amount of hours on set and they got to have a set teacher. Wow. Things oh. like that that regulates them. Before they didn't have that? or Before people were working kids. Do it too. That's why you see a lot of shows. <laughs> yeah. You see a lot of shows yeah. that, yeah. that kids. You see a lot of high school shows that kids are playing uh, high school kids. Yeah. They're not, they're over 18. You know that? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, like the Olsen twins. Like they grew up on set. Like a lot of them how, did. Yeah. How did they have a childhood at that time? Well, I don't. I can't answer for that situation. For they are and look at them yeah. now, where they're at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they made the money a certain time. But at the same time, they lost a lot of that childhood too. Right? Yeah, right, right. So look at a lot of the other 
other great child actors that that just fizzle away because the parents or families uh, took their money and didn't take care. And so when you have a kid that initially you're supposed to create a call a Coogan account, that money can't be touched at an age because that way they can the kids when they become of age they have the legal rights to that money so they can wow. build their future. There's a whole yeah. rule yeah. that the business side. That yeah, and those twins know. struggle a lot throughout yeah. throughout their adulthood, and they don't man. tell you these stuff. Well, huh? When you go yeah. in yeah. and all that stuff, you kind of got to find out on yeah. your own. So or, yeah, that's mm-hmm. why I said go to people that know, that yeah. are mentor, that right. have been in the industry, yep. will tell you. I was a child. Uh, uh, I was kid talent developer for years. I was developing talents. I still I do acting school. I coach, mm-hmm. and when people come to me and they say, "See, this is a step I need to do," like family, like, "Oh, I want my kids in the industry." I said, "Okay." Um, these are the steps I need to know. Does actually does your kid want to do it first? Yeah, yeah. yeah. First and foremost, don't force the kid because they're, yeah. they're kids. Right. Let them. Right. You want to play soccer? Let them play soccer. Yeah. If they feel like this acting is great, but you got to be careful. You got to watch who you have because they got predator. Yeah. How much money? Make sure they, did your kids want. If your kids get bored, then do something else. Wow. It, that's a dark side. That's reality. That's the dark yeah. side, but man. but but see, being called Lao, I understand this business. I had to learn the business, so I see everything that happened. I was a talent developer, but I was an actor first. I direct. I know. I know how each department works. I'm still learning, man. I'm yeah. still learning, dealing with million dollars of a budget, dealing with no budget, and a lot of people take advantage of that. I'm. I'm. I, when people come to man, me and ask, crazy. I'm straightforward, man. I'm yeah. not gonna lie, because I know I don't want them to fall that trap. But I understand. I want them to see you can do this, make a living. But you also have to put work, but there also going to be a lot of struggle. Mm-hmm. But if you go back to again, if you're persistent, if you know your value, if you know your worth and you want to do this, anything is possible. Mm-hmm. Don't let anybody stop you, man. Right. Straightforward. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we're uh, coming up on uh, our time here, so we want to give uh, KP the last word. Any advice that you want to give the audience, the kid that are doing TikTok, YouTube, that want to get into the uh, film industry? Um, that don't know what they want to do and you know like how can how can they get into the um the industry and which industry. way they should go you yeah. know you know I, I love instead I, of the <laughs> casting couch <laughs> yeah you know i love what our community is doing especially a lot of the folks that do the tiktok they're creating content they're controlling the creative narrative as keep doing that and and be and then you're gonna get opportunity when you want to get to this stuff understand you have followers now what about social media it's about followers Real followers, not fake followers. Right. People that have leverage, yep. learn the industry, go get some training. If you don't have acting, to look at classes. When you look at class, find the right coaches, find the right mentors. I'm happy to be a mentor. I'm happy to help any kids that understand, that are under, don't understand the business, the rules and regulations, because I've done that. So I want to encourage our community, not just our kids, but anybody that wants to get in the industry, you can do it. Let's let's put more of a face out there. Let's put more of a yes, face yes, out there. Yes, yes, Let yes, everybody yes. know what's sexy and spicy. Yes. <laughs> that we're mad yeah. Laotian, that we're coming. Yeah. We're part of this great entertainment business. Not only that, we're also part of this community. We are a narrative. We have stories in this besides, oh, what, are you Chinese? Yeah. Chinese? Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. I'm Laotian. What ocean are you from? You know, <laughs> right, yes. right, right. So that we can, that we're proud of who we are. You can be sunny, Panyasai, you know, but last yeah. or Panyasai, whatever it may be. But your last name is going to stick. So right. I, my biggest thing that I encourage kids to, if you want to do this, I know there's a hesitant from family members. So go with it. Do go get college education if you want to. Great, do that. Do whatever you can take. But if you have a dream, go for it. Whether you're in music, whatever it is, all I say is now you can do that. You have the opportunity. The only excuse you're gonna make is yourself. You, I'm not competing against anybody. I'm telling you straight for. Yes. I'm not competing with you, 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 you. I'm competing with myself. I'm the biggest competitor of all. Yeah. I'm the one that's gonna have to answer my stuff. I'm not going to blame you. I can't do this because my mom. I can't do this because my cousin. I can't do this because my circumstances. That's bullshit, guys. We come from a resilient people, okay? Yeah. Don't matter if you're from the north, south. We come from resilient, traditionally. Mm-hmm. A really resilient. We want to know history of a lot? Yeah. The oppression of the, the Thai, all that war, all that stuff going on way before the Vietnam era. We have always been the people that rise up. We're the land of what? The million elephant people yeah. that rise together, that right. always... We're the happy people, right? We're known as loud, yeah. the happy people. Why? Because we're resilient. Yeah. And so if I can encourage all our community, <clears throat> keep doing what you do because yes. we're going to be sitting at, we deserve to be at the table. Yeah. I don't want to scrap. Right. For me, yeah. I want to set up the table so I can pour all my 
We're so we're much crap. Hennessy. Well, yeah. I don't care. I'm gonna get. You guys got bought a Hennessy and Henny again, whatever it yeah. may be. You want. We pull each other down too much. Let's not do yes. that. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Let's yes. not do that. How but, can they reach out to you um, if they want <laughs> mentor, okay. advice, or anything like that? Hi, actors. <laughs> I'm in all platforms, social media, K Panya Sai at Facebook, K Panya Sai on Instagram. But you can follow me on my website and you can reach out to all my social media. It's K Panya Sai, K P H A G N A S A Y dot com. You'll find out everything I'm doing, my latest news, then nice. all that stuff, information. All my information there, and then if you need anything, please just reach out to me. I'm here to help. I want to be a influence our community. Mm-hmm. I want to be able to make a difference because I saw that through my parents. Right. I saw that through a lot of people. I saw a lot of people pull me up. You know, I don't want everyone to pull me down. Even you've done wrong to me. I want the best for you, my brother. I want the best for you, my sister, because we deserve it, especially Kwon yes. yeah. We deserve mm-hmm. that. Because too long we we hurt each other. Right, we, the, right. the biggest people that come, we hurt each other too much. Yes, you know too many stuff. We gotta stop that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not better than you. I want to see you success, man. Yeah. I want to raise you. I, I want people to so support the show. I want people right. to subscribe. Yeah. This is important. Why we're right. talking about that something that matters in a community. Right. It's us. Right. Yes. yes. Right. It's us. Amen. We need to change that right. scarcity mindset to abundance mindset. Absolutely. There's Amen. enough business and wealth for all Absolutely. of us. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Wise Amen. word, wise word from yeah. the OGKP. Yep. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Bing. Thank you for listening and watching, guys. And we want to thank KP for giving us his time and lending yep. his wise word for the future generations uh, yep, of our coach absolutely. and people listening, you know, mm-hmm. but yep. that's it for us tonight. So thank you for listening and in a watching session, guys. In a session. <laughs>